Jacob Hartsock joins us now in Studio B. You have nine points in two minutes against Pepperdine, and then uh, you come down the floor, and I mean, everyone knew it was going up, man. You just got you got to test it. What was that moment like for you when you're like, I, I can't miss? It was awesome. I mean, you know, I just felt really confident in my shot, and you know, teammates were making great passes, especially on that last pass by Jordan. I didn't know if it was going to be like the other guy was going to get it, and then Jordan just tipped it to me real quick, and I was just like, oh, I shot it. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> Ran back. I was like, okay, feeling good. So. What was that like? I mean, as we mentioned, you know, you hadn't been getting a lot of minutes, mm -hmm. and Coach Rose has decided to to give you some more playing time, and, and not only did you take advantage of it, you took advantage of it on, on a big stage like that. What was that like to be able to come out like that? It was great. Um, you know, I'm super grateful for the coaches and for all my teammates just supporting me all season and pushing me all season to become better and to always be confident. So it was great to just go out there and have that opportunity to show what I have and to be confident and go play out there. So it was pretty great. Are you the best shooter at BYU to ever come from Bartlesville, Oklahoma? Oh, I don't know. I'd say three-point shooter potentially. Okay. I mean, inside three, I think Noah. He's he's an amazing, amazing mid-range player, so... But you're a better three-point shooter. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I want to know is everybody remarks about how your shooting style is the exact same as Noah's. Was that intentional? Did did you try and shoot like Noah since he's your older brother, or was is that just in the DNA? My dad, <clears throat> my dad just had us go outside every day and practice shooting for hours and hours. So we just all learned how to shoot the same and play the same. So it's pretty fun. When you beat a team like Pepperdine, after they had beaten you in Malibu, you come home in front of that crowd. It's a sellout. It's nuts. What does that do for a team and the mentality and the confidence moving forward when you know you got St. Mary's coming in? Um, I think it really helps us, but um, we also have to always, always be humble as a team because um, we're going into a great team in St. Mary's, and it's just all about preparation right now. So we had an excitement for a little moment, but now we're prepared and preparing to get ready for St. Mary's. So. I heard Coach Rose say that, that one of the reasons that you hadn't gotten a lot of playing time um, at the beginning of the year, or at least consistent minutes, was you know it was, it was taking a little bit longer than they expected to kind of get what was going on some of the schemes. That obviously has changed, and the coach has a lot of confidence in you. What changed for you? Why, why did things change and, and you earned that trust of the coaches? Um, that's a great question. I think like early on coming home from a mission, it's obviously tough to get back and understand and remember all the basketball. But I think um, I just keep pushing and um, definitely my teammates helped a lot. They like helped me to like realize where I need to be on defense and where to be on offense. And coaches always just pushed me to get better and better. So I think it's just like continually learning throughout the year and gaining the confidence I needed to play at this level and just always never giving up and keep pushing. So, When we talk to BYU athletes who come off <clears throat> missions, whether it be football or basketball, everyone kind of has a different take on what was the most difficult aspect of making that transition, whether it be finding your shot. Nick Emery has said, man, it took me a long time to find my shot. Some people say conditioning. Some people say just overall flow of the game. What was the most difficult part for you coming off of your mission? It was definitely the mentality. Um, you know, on a mission, like when I first got there, I, we'd play basketball in P days. I'd be so competitive and just be like, yeah, let's go, like to all my companions and stuff when we played one-on-one. -on -one. And then I kind of realized, you know, I'm not on a mission to play basketball. I'm here to teach the gospel. So coming home, it was hard to like get that competitive edge back. But once I got it, I was super excited and it turned out great. So All right, let's, let's get to the really important question here. This is what I want to know. What is it with the Hard Sock Brothers and volleyball players because your your brother married a former BYU volleyball player you are engaged to a current BYU volleyball player and Sophie Cram yeah uh, what, what the heck man what, what's, what's what is going the deal on? with with the Heart Sock boys and and the women's <laughs> volleyball team I have no idea I think I don't know I think they're just beautiful women so <laughs> I think we're just Always been attracted to heart, or volleyball girls. So. Okay. Oh. Athletes. Athletes, yeah. But I don't know. She's she's an amazing woman, so I got lucky there. So Jacob Hartsock with us in Studio B. Hit three big three-pointers in a BYU win against Pepperdine on Saturday night. The Cougars now 
a few days away from hosting St. Mary's. When you look at what the Gales bring into the Marriott Center, it is a top 50 RPI team. They're ranked number 25 in the country. And oh, by the way, that brings us to our Daily RPI Watch. It's the Daily RPI Watch on BYU Sports Nation. This just in from the RPI News Desk. BYU have two spots to number 57. Jason, back to you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so two here, spots. here's the thing. Here's the thing. RPI matters when you want to make the NCAA tournament. And we all know that St. Mary's presents this amazing opportunity for BYU to get a quality win on Thursday. But how do you not allow that to seep in and you just kind of like focus on the game is it possible to not let that seep in um i think so coach rose does a really good job about um preparing for every game the same way um, he tells us that we in order to be a great team we have to win the big games and we have to win the small games so he's really good about um teaching us and helping us to focus on every game the exact same and realize that every game is important so I mean, I'm sure in the back of our heads we're, like, excited because it's a good team and we get to play a good team. But, um, like, we're all focused on getting this win and every win. How much of the previous game against the Gales have you watched? And what do you guys feel you need to do better this time around? Uh, definitely get out to three-point shooters. Um, just watching the game when I was sitting and watching and then um, just watching it on film, we just see that, like, a lot of – um, their buckets were transition threes or just like uh, big men just rolled and guards got them the ball. So just guarding the roll and guarding the three-point line would be huge for us. So. The competitive edge that you talked about, when you play a team like St. Mary's, I think I think most BYU fans, while they are looking at new West Coast Conference rivals, it's Gonzaga or St. Mary's, but but in my opinion, it's it's more St. Mary's than Gonzaga. Just because of the way that games have ended, the physical play, the technical fouls, things like that, all things that go into a rivalry. So does this does this game give you like an added measure of, oh, I didn't want to beat those guys? I'm excited, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. Now, when when you have to prepare for a game like that, uh, and you're playing in front of your home crowd and you're 10-0 at home. Uh, what kind of things does Coach Rose say to you in, in terms of at practice? Like, okay, again, this is this is an important game, but don't don't let the hype of this outweigh what we're trying to do on the floor. Yeah, he's he's always talked about just like making sure that you always play your hardest and and play your best, and to always make sure that no matter what, you always keep your head. Um, that's most important. Just always make sure that you maintain a good. Um, good look for BYU and just always maintain a good, um, I guess, mental level so you don't lose your head. <laughs> Jacob, before we let you go, we want to ask you our, our Twitter question today. So with today being Groundhog Day, in honor of Groundhog Day, what BYU sports moment or event would you like to relive over and over again? Oh, is there man. one that comes to mind? There is. So I remember we were in South Padre Island when BYU was playing down there. Yeah. And I think it was South Florida. And I remember... BYU was either tied or down one, and Jimmer passed the ball to my brother Noah in the corner and hits that game winner, and we all just went crazy, and I love that. My, I remember looking over at my dad. He was tearing up because he was so proud of him, and I was like, this is awesome. So. That's a good brother. That is his a great moment brother. involves his brother. Look at that. That's awesome. But you're still a better three-point shooter, right? Oh, obviously. <laughs> I hope Noah is listening. We love you, Noah. Jacob, great to have you in studio. Be good luck against St. Mary's on Thursday. Thank you.